Well, it is highly possible, highly probable, that a wide-ranging review of gambling laws will be launched as early as tomorrow and will consider banning sports sponsorships, limiting online casino stakes, amongst a, a whole raft of proposals to overhaul gambling laws for the first time since the Blair government's Gambling Act in 2005 and it's entirely possible that huge portions of that gambling act could be rolled back. It's time to examine the potential consequences for the sport of that and what the sport and the gambling industry might need to do better and I'm delighted to say that I'm joined by the Chief Executive UK and Ireland of Flutter which encompasses a whole global family of betting entities, the best known amongst them on these shores being Paddy Power, Betfair and Sky Bet and gaming. Conor Grant, uh, welcome. Good morning. Good morning, Nick. Thank you for having me on the show. So when do we realistically expect this, this gambling review to be officially launched? Well, we, we anticipate that the launch will be announced in the coming days, as you have alluded to earlier in the show. Uh, and as a company and as an industry, you know, Flutter, uh, we certainly recognise that this is a really important step. We welcome the review. We think it's very important. And I think it's important that we put some context for our viewers this morning. The Gambling Act was written in 2001 and came into law in 2005, and it predates the era of smartphones, social media, and a lot, whole host of technological changes that have impacted betting and gaming. And from our perspective, we really, as a business flutter, we want to promote betting and gaming, and we, we want to promote it in a moderation. And we think this is hugely important. And recently, our chief executive, Peter Jackson, writing in the Racing Post, you know, offered some potential solutions and quest, posed some very strong questions for us as an industry that we really have to think about. And, you know, there's three key areas that we're thinking about. We're thinking about how do we promote safer gambling better, particularly amongst younger people. This is a really important measure, we think. The second thing is when we look at the length of time that people spend, how can we learn from other industries to increase the transparency? This is particularly important when we look at the alcohol industry and, and the food, fast food sectors. And then finally, the, the, the big issue, which is around if it's spend and you know online staking limits and what people should be able to spend on gambling. And it's, it's a big issue, this, and it balances a very fine line between societal intervention and personal freedom. And it's very important to remember as we approach this review, all ideas should be on the table. The, we, we need to sit down and we need to take an evidence-based approach we cannot get into cosmetic measures because as you and Dave were speaking earlier, you know, banning sponsorship, for example, of sport will have a lot of unintended consequences. And we need to be make sure that all stakeholders sit down, we're around the table and we discuss these measures and we really get into what are we doing here? What are we trying to achieve? We want to reform gambling. We know that we want to modernize it. But fundamentally, we have to protect those that suffer from gambling disorder. One case is too many, and it's vital that we take these measures. But equally, we must balance that with millions and millions of people enjoy betting safely. And this is a very, very important point. Uh, the interesting notes as regards the raft of, uh, of measures that might be brought in I think is that the idea that there could be really stringent affordability checks on on punters wanting to wanting to bet what what would your reaction be to that look it's very important that we do assess affordability and as a company and as an industry we have taken measures and we particularly look at customers who are predisposed to spending more amounts we have to make sure that they can afford to spend this I think what's really important here is, as the, the Gambling Commission recently announced the affordability consultation, that we get, we, we again use an evidence-based approach. Putting low thresholds in would be a blunt approach to this, and it would have a lot of unintended consequences, particularly for the racing sector. And, you know, racing gets us a big levy uh, earned from, from betting, and low th thresholds would affect hundreds of thousands of customers and potentially stop them betting and that wouldn't really move us forward as we want to focus on what the real issue at hand is here we want to minimize gambling disorder this would be a blunt approach that would impact vast sums of customers who enjoy gambling safely so how do you minimize gambling disorder connor 
How do you play a big part in that? How do you lead on that? Well, we have been leading, uh, both as a business and a, as an industry. We've taken numbers of measures. We've worked with the Betting and Gaming Council to introduce these. In the last few years, we've introduced a whistle-to-whistle -whistle ban uh, for TV to restrict the number of adverts. It's also important we've been investing lots of money internally in our business to do two things. One, to work to how can we improve the identification of problem gambling and how do we interact more with these customers. Just to give you some stats, last month we had 200,000 interactions with our customers on Safer Gambling, which ended up with 10,000 customer accounts being reviewed and 5,000 accounts where we took measures which we think are appropriate to safeguard customers and either to restrict spend or to, to work with them to make sure they introduce deposit limits. These are important measures. We must take these measures to make sure that we are furthering and reducing and minimising harm and this is really important. It has to be a data-led approach and an insight. Problem gambling is incredibly complex. It's highly nuanced and when you spend time with people who have lived experience you really do get to understand how complex this is and blunt measures will not move us forward here. What will ultimately end up happening is we will push people offshore to black uh, to, to black market operators but we want this is a regulated business a regulated industry that contributes lots in taxes and to other sports and sectors and it's really important that we do focus on the problem we avoid cosmetic gestures and we really get into all ideas are on the table but they have to be evidence-based but people will say that this is a, a cosmetic process now, a PR drive now to try and project a better image of the betting industry because the image of the betting industry has become so bad within wider society. You cannot pick up the Daily Mail each day without a, a negative headline about a specific gambling addiction, about VIP schemes, about big corporations including your own luring people in with the Office of VIP schemes and then not looking after punters properly. I'm not saying each and every one of these stories uh, you know, is, is absolutely, uh, you know, it has, has absolutely copper bottom veracity, but you know that the, the image of gambling that's being portrayed to the wider public at the moment. Nick, look, there's some very important points here. Firstly, as a sector, we haven't always put our best foot forward. I acknowledge that, the sector acknowledges that. But equally, you have to look at the measures that we have introduced, both um, from a mandatory perspective and regulatory perspective. We've withdrawn, uh, credit cards are now banned. That was a great step forward by the Gambling Commission. We have introduced, increased uh, the funding into research, education and treatment uh, to problem gambling. That's another step forward and we're going to ramp that up to significant, almost 100 million by the end of 2023. These are really important measures. I think it's also important, within Flutter we've conducted a number of prevalence surveys with customers uh, who bet and those that don't. And while uh, the vast majority, there is no clamour for stringent regulations, but when you really push customers, they do acknowledge that because of this negative perception that maybe regulations need tightened. We welcome this. We want to be engaged with all the stakeholders as the gambling review comes along to improve not just the image of gambling, but make real difference to customers, particularly those that minimise harm. That's what this is about. It's also about making sure that the legislation ref reflects what we do today in, a, in an era when technology has powered gambling and, and betting and social media. And we have to really make sure we're putting our best foot forward here. Let's talk about the, the return for racing. A, a lot's been talked about what is a fair return for, for horse racing from the betting industry. And the Times this week, Matt Lawton uh, wrote a piece in the Times where he quoted John Gosden extensively. And John Gosden had done interviews with us earlier in the year when he talked about you know, racing needs to get its, get its house in order and levy re reform must happen now or the sport will die. And there was a, a, a turnover versus a revenue uh, table at the bottom. Um, British racing betting turnover is, is 15.6 billion but gives only 86.3 million back to the sport. Compare that to Australia where it's 9.4 billion but contributes 247.5 million back to the sport. Um, what do you believe as CEO of Flutter UK and Ireland is a fairer return for the sport? Well Nick, I'd like to give you two perspectives. Firstly, I'd like to give you the perspective of my, of my role as CEO of Flutter UK in Ireland, but I'm also a racing fan 
and I'm also a, a part owner in four modest horses that are trained by Richard Fahey and Dave O'Meara here up in Yorkshire. So I have I, I, I sit on both sides of the fence and look at this. In terms of from my CEO perspective, let's be quite clear, racing like broader society has really suffered as a result of COVID. This is the second biggest spectator sport in the United Kingdom. Again, we welcome the levy review uh, that's being led by Joe Samaria Smith. We think this is a very important time for racing. And as a racing fan, I think, and a chief exec of a betting company, we have to really use this. COVID has highlighted, you know, the funding shortages. But let's really put this into perspective. Racing needs broader reform. It, there's four key stakeholders at the moment. There's the government bodies. There's the race course groups. There is also... Um, the, the horsemen and you know then there's the media rights but bookmaking needs to be involved in this historically there was an, it's been more of an adversarial relationship between racing and betting it needs to be a partnership that sets racing on the front foot and within flutter we've got a number of ideas and proposals that we would like to sit down with racing and really look at this and you know from our perspective what we want to do is we need to uh, using the levy reform we need to get alignment on the funding framework what does this look like you know, we need to align the levy and media rights payments for, to create sustainable future for racing. We need to look at how do we co-create a customer-led strategy that looks at the different narratives of the seasons. You know, and what, it was interesting listening to you guys earlier today on the, on, on the show. You know, racing has to cater for the novice beginner who enjoys a day out at the races. And wasn't it fantastic to see people back and racing this week and hearing people roar in Politolog home yesterday. That's what we need. We need spectators back and we need that to grow. But we have to cater for them. The third point I would make is we need to look at how do we read, look at the scheduling and how do we really understand what are the value drivers for horse racing. This is critical. Bookmaking has significant sums of data based on our customers. We want to work with racing to look at the scheduling. We want to look at the value drivers, times of races, the number uh, of runners in races. These are all important steps. And the final piece I would add is we've got to look at being more innovative with our products. We have to utilize our data and the insight that we have, that we have from an online perspective and from the, the race courses. How do we come together to build a great future for racing. That's the real question here. Bookmaking and will invest in racing and Flutter is prepared to invest in racing. In 2019, we spent invested 72 million in racing from levy, media rights and sponsorship. We sponsored the entire card at Sandown yesterday. We want to grow this sport, but we have to do this together. But it's vital that we do it together as a but Connor, just to give that a bit of perspective, between, between July and September, your company recorded more than £1.3 billion of global revenue. So, yes, you're, you're contributing, but the argument from many within the sport is that you should be contributing more, given particularly how well you've done during this, this COVID period where, where people have been betting an awful lot on, on horse racing. Well, there's a number of points uh, to make there. Firstly, Nick, we're a global organisation. You know, we've got four international divisions, Australia, US, uh, UK and Ireland, and obviously from um, also our international business. But I would point out, when we moved out of uh, the initial lockdown and racing came back, and also when the betting shops were closed, we increased our investment in media rights. The, our, our business reflects a broad range of sports it also recognizes online gaming we want to invest more in racing but we need to sit down and have that conversation with racing bodies and what that looks like it's not a case of the bookmaking industry just can't be expected to write a check and the status quo is maintained that won't be sufficient i think we have to put our best foot forward here we have to get into the room we have to build partnerships and really invest in creating a sustainable future for racing that's what this is really about so are you saying it's not just about product? It's not just about volume of product. You don't think that a pilot high, sell it cheap model, just more races, more betting opportunities, is necessarily the right way to build a funding model for the sport. Is that what you're saying? I, I completely agree. We don't know. We have to look at what are the, the, the value drivers of this industry. You know, Dave alluded to it. I was sitting yesterday as a racing fan watching the Tingle Crease, watching the Novice Chase before that. And, you know, there's so much great racing back to back. You can't turn away for a second. Is that right? You know, we learned a lot this year.
when COVID uh, enforced us to look at our racing schedule and we looked at it differently. And from the period of June and September when we had racing, additional days racing on terrestrial TV, the ITV races generated three and a half times more revenue. That results in greater profits and that is what is invested in racing and that's where we have to get to. We have to look at what are the drivers for racing here. Racing and betting are symbiotic. You cannot separate them. We have to work together and if we do that we will generate more for racing and put racing in a long term sustainable footing. What, what I want to get, drill down into is, is the mechanics of how a better deal, a better levy deal might work, Connor. So if you, if you try, and, try and be impartial for just a second and try, and try and speak as a racing fan, how would it work? How would this collaborative process work to get racing a better figure than the figure they come to at the moment for, for annual levy? How do they get up to that sort of 200 million mark? Well, first of all, we have to look at how racing is currently funded. So you have the levy and you also have uh, media rights yeah. and they're two separate payments. W one is based on turnover, one is based on gross profits. So they, they aren't aligned, you know, and what we have to look at is how do we get the alignment uh, there and how do we engage in the process? The levy review will happen. Has bookmaking got a seat at that? It's bookmaking being involved to ask how do we come together to develop this? And I think I will put my, my hat, fan hat on and think, well, you look at the sport, you look at the range of opportunities to grow it. You look at the, the, the big opportunity is the schedule. You, you look at the, the Saturdays, Nick, during the summertime in particular, when you've got such crowded fixture lists, it really does reduce the impact of racing. And we've worked, our colleagues, my colleagues and Paddy Parr have worked with HRI, a horse race in Ireland, and we've seen real changes been implemented over there around the scheduling and race times. Uh, and this has benefited horse racing in Ireland and has also benefited racing in total. And I think that's what we have to do. We cannot think that things can continue as is that, and that's how we're going to grow the sport. What we need to do is we need to sit down, we need to work out how do we fund racing what is the framework for that? How do we get joint aligned goals that make sure that racing is the beneficiary? Because if both racing and the betting sector both benefit from horse racing, we both win and that puts racing on a better footing. Connor, have you just advocated a, a, a turnover model as recommended by many senior figures within, within horse racing? What I've said is, Nick, we, need, we can't dismiss either model. We need to look at it and we need to look at what is the best way forward. Uh, for racing and for the betting industry. How are we going to grow racing? Because that's what the critical point here is. We need to work out what is the best point for us to move forward to put racing on a sustainable future footing. Connor, thank you very much for talking to me uh, and we will await the developments of, of this week with, with great interest. Thank you very much. Subscribe to Racing TV to be notified when more Luck on Sunday videos are appearing online. And don't forget to join me for the show every Sunday morning from 9 o'clock with the best guests.